there are millions of data science opportunities, but most of them are not being filled up. But at the same time, there are millions of students, but they're not even able to get a single data science job or an internship. It's because 99% of the data science aspirants are just doing the same thing. And that 1% who is doing things differently and having a differentiator in them are actually grabbing high paying jobs. I'm going to give you this step by step roadmap that not only helps you become a data scientist, but transforms you into one. And it's not something quick or an easy way. It's the hardest way to become the data scientist. And after you complete this roadmap, you'll be not just having one role as a data scientist, but throughout this roadmap, you will see different roles will be opening up for you. So if you want to apply in between to any of the companies for a specific set of roles, then for sure you're open to. But before proceeding to the technical details, I'm going to make one thing specifically clear, the mindset which my viewer or my student should have if they're watching this video. If you cannot agree with this mindset or if you don't want to, then for sure, please feel free to leave the video. So the mindset which I really want my students to adopt over the period of a time is if you're starting off in any of the field, whether it be data science, WebD or anything, you should be very clear that there's no smart way or probably the quickest or easy way sort of thing. There's only one way which comes into play, which is the hardest way. It can definitely be backed up by several other factors, but there's only one way which can lead you to success, which is the hardest way. So if your journey is feeling very easy, comfortable, non-differentiated, that you're doing the same thing which everybody is doing, then probably you will be again doing that what 99% of the people are doing over here. So make up a mindset. From now to eight months to one year, you should be entirely dedicated and committed to this domain. And it may happen that you're not able to understand even a single thing for months. When I was starting off, I was also not able to understand things with like mathematics or probably algorithms for a straight three to four months, but it's completely all right. It's indicating that you're actually learning if you're not able to understand because you're putting in effort to understand that thing. And you should continue this over the period of a month and you should put your day and nights off your everything, off your every distraction which you have. I will tell you, when I was starting off my journey, I used to wake up in the morning around 5 a.m. and then I used to study till 10 p.m. in the night. And of course, I used to take breaks about one hour in between. People just see the output or the success. People don't see what exactly the input which is required. And after you become successful, you can think about whatever way you want. Currently, I work in a smart way, not the hardest way. So it's like once you become something, then think about how you want to do things. And now if you have made up the mindset, then only proceed with the video. The first thing into this domain, which you should definitely consider is what domain you want to go in. Some of the domains are data scientist, machine learning engineers, ML ops engineer, data analyst, data analyst consultant, and much more. And this roadmap is applicable to most of the data and machine learning related roles. The first and the foremost thing is to learn the right programming language, which is Python. But everybody on YouTube is telling you to learn Python and every roadmap has it. To be honest, yes, it's definitely required. But, but what really matters is that how you are learning this, which means that that will make you the different from those 99% of the people out there. And you have to learn differently to become that top 1%. But if you already have a knowledge of Python and a little bit of programming, what you can really do is simply go ahead and then skip this step. If you're new to the programming, the first thing which you should do is simply go on YouTube and search learn Python one shot see any of the videos i'm not vouching any creators see any any of the videos you should be able to at least write code which is print hello world and if you already have a basic knowledge of, about programming then it is not required at all for you will it make you a difference of course not it will make you that 99 percent of the people who are doing the same thing now what you should do you should search online and go python documentation now when you go to the python documentation you will see the take up table of contents and if you follow that you should be able to become a pretty good coder but wait there's a catch there's a line written or a phrase is written that it says that this documentation is not a comprehensive and it does not cover each and every single features of python but if you complete this you should be able to write understand and run your python code which means it is telling a very crucial insight, which only few 
engineers or few aspirants are able to decode what it is really saying is you to become a generalizer so let's talk about what exactly the generalizer means so say for example you know the core and the crux of uh, python now it says now start working on problems now if that problem if you've already learned about how to solve that from what you have read in the table of contents or the documentation good to go and implement that but if you don't know then you should come back to the documentation see in more specific details if that feature is available to solve the problem and if not how you can use existing features in a way that solves the specific problems and that's what generalizers are generalizers are not spoon feed or know everything even i don't know everything but if i have a problem how i can solve this with the existing technology which is available and that's what generalizers are usually meant for and generalizers are only getting jobs and that's the gold mine advice i am working for the past 3 to 4 years and this is the advice which i got from senior engineers from amazon google ibm and much more and this is something which i want you to implement in your life now you have completed the programming track you are probably better than some of the people but to become the actual g in python what you should actually do is write better code and that's where design patterns in python comes into the rescue which really means that that you should be able to write a code in a way that is scalable defensive well documented much more features of python so design patterns is very rare which i see in the python or data science aspirants but this is one of the most important part for any of the job roles out there everybody can write code but what matters is how well and how nicely you present your code which is well structured and the code qualities and that's the most important thing so if you're able to do this you are probably the actual g and probably better than those 99% of the people i've given you some of the best resources best books around design patterns and python in the description down box below in the pdf format you should be able to go and check that out and each and every resource stated in the video should be easily able to find out over there but wait you have literally opened a new job role with this which is software engineering in python and if you want so you can just go ahead and then start applying to this these kind of jobs and that's it but now if you want to continue your journey then you should continue listening the video you should start post programming track you should start with data analysis asap whether you want to become data analyst or not this is the most important thing out there it should really involves identifying data resources identifying wrong connections trouble sorting excel writing complex sql queries and much more to get started with this domain i would highly suggest you to first of all learn the necessary libraries which is the most important part of it and one of my director where i was working in the past they said there's no point in learning machine learning if you don't know these necessary libraries which is pandas numpy and matplotlib these are the bare back and probably the pillars or the foundations which you should definitely have in your toolbox i've given you some of the in depth the hard resources and the lengthiest thing which you should should follow in order to become a generalizer know the core and the crux and know how to solve a problem using these libraries but the best thing is that you can literally learn all of this via their official documentation or specific topic based books and the links are in the pdf and post that you should consider learning about excel which is still the most important and still applicable to most of the companies out there and you should also consider learning tableau because there's no point in working as a data analyst and you don't know tableau because you should analyze data and if you're not able to visualize and understand data then there's no point about that so tableau is one of the most uh, important dev developer tools which you should have into your toolbox and then post that you should consider learning sql the king the king makers and that's the most important part as i said i personally don't host any data analytics course but i have one of the platform which i personally went through and asked them the access to the course they were very generous to give me the access to the course and i went through it and it was amazing things over there so i personally like that so i would suggest you to take a look this is not such a promotion or sponsorship this is just that i personally like that i've seen so many students from there succeeding so probably you can 
it's better to give it a shot so you should not consider paying initially you should go to the free course see how exactly they are teaching what they are teaching and then you can make some decision going forward because i'm a big fan of first of all validating and seeing if it's really something for you so that's it about if you want to go for the uh, good resources which i personally find in the paid enrollments but if you want to see some free stops, I have personally mentioned some of the books, some of the resources, which I find it personally good in terms of the PDF, which you can find in the description bound box below. And to be honest, I personally like Course Career's features, which I exactly have at Anton, which is resume formatting, 101 uh, student and instructor coaches, which I don't generally find in other platforms. And another thing which I really like about them is they have the kind of a network on the community because I suggest you to get into the community where you can literally connect, network and talk with like-minded people. Now, once you're done with the data analysis and you're comfortable with that, you should start applying to new set of jobs ASAP, which is data analytics, analytical consultancy and other such roles like SQL developer, Tableau developer and much more. Now it's time for mathematics, the core and strength of machine learning and data science. So there are some of the topics which is extremely important. The first one is linear algebra, which is pretty much used into the space, calculus and probability and statistics. There's one more known as information theory, but it's a little advanced stuff. It will come over the later period of time. But these three things are extremely important for you to know. My course teaches all of this, but my course enrollments are closed as of now. So I would suggest you to fill up and trust if you want to know when the next batch comes up. And there's one trick which I really want to give you is learn mathematics not by solving things because in machine learning you will not solve by hand. You should learn machine mathematics for machine learning is by understanding its beauty, is by understanding its geometrical aspect. Then only you can relate how mathematics is going to be used into the space of machine learning and data science. So once you're done with the maths part, particularly now it's the time for core machine learning. I have an entire video on the roadmap for machine learning, which has got a 300k plus views, which is quite amazing till now. But this one trick which I want you to know before proceeding to that roadmap is that say for example you have a topic known as a regression analysis so most of the people on youtube what they really do they just go and just see one to two hour of youtube videos which is really really kind of everyone is doing that but you know you have a specific 600 pager book on every topic which you see in machine learning i don't want you to complete everything but i want you to take a look and probably complete 50 percent of it because most of the people don't have a probably time and probably that that guts to complete those sort of books i had the time and the guts to complete that say for example you're learning decision tree or such set of examples what you should do you should go to their research paper from where it is originated from you will see the beauty that people coming from a very some lame thing and then trying to convert that to a literal powerful systems which is pretty pretty amazing which is pretty exciting even if i'm talking right now it's just giving me so chills that how something very very small is able to build the foundation is able to generalize to a level that it is in a billions of parameters today to, towards like gpt slots are coming towards so i'd highly suggest you read the 90s research papers which was published because they tell you their type of technology which you already know and how they use that in order to build this and that's the best advice which i could give you into this once you're done with this stuff, you're probably open for the machine learning, most of the machine learning engineering, data scientist or consultant roles. But here's the catch. I, I said most of them, not all of them. To make all of them, you should learn a technology which is now becoming the compulsory things in the jobs and probably coming becoming the bonus thing which will really help you, which is MLOps. I'm a big fan of MLOps. I've worked as one of the largest framework or the best framework in MLOps, which is GenML. And, uh, over there, I have worked as an MLOps engine. And I know the importance of it and the importance with the company it really gives to the MLOps guys. I personally have a specific roadmap about MLOps into the YouTube channel. All of the links can be found in the description. You can go and check that out. So I definitely want you to take a look at the MLOps video which I've published. But post that, this one thing which I would want you to learn to know more better about MLOps is learning about a library known as XenML. Again, it's one of the best framework, not because I've worked, but because of their kind of libraries and the concept which they implement from MLOps principles. So I highly suggest about XenML, the specific roadmap for XenML is published into the PDF. But for every part, you need to continuously revisit that, revise that, and build projects on top of it. 
I have not told you how to build projects, but to be honest, if you want to know more about it, I am hosting a live webinar, which is 1.5 hour webinar. You can find the date, everything in the description about how to build a project in a unique way that will differentiate you from those 99% of people. So if you're interested, definitely check that out. But yeah, that's definitely it. Thank you so much. I'll catch you up in the another video. Tab tak kari. Bye.